Good evening, everyone. This is Scott, a.k.a. XRIN FE. I uh, wanted to give you guys a quick update on where my uh, status of my overhead panel is from FDS. Um, or I should say uh, FDS and the real panel. Um, I'm using a real 737. I believe it's a Dash 300 uh, panel frame here with all FDS uh, panels, um, the IBL panels. Um, I, I paid extra and had them put real Zeus fasteners on mine so I can just pop these all in and out of the uh, actual overhead frame. I had to do some modifications to the overhead frame to get it to uh, to, to get the, the fit right on the bottom panel especially and the middle panel. Uh, but otherwise all the other panels fit right in there. Uh, I'm using flight, flight illusion gauges uh, for the uh, fuel. Well the fuel temp is a real gauge, excuse me. Uh, I have a flight illusion gauge for the uh, APU. Uh, there'll be flight illusion gauges in here for the uh, pressurization panel. Uh, I've got the FDS kit to put in for the pressurization panel. That's not in there yet. Uh, this cockpit voice recorder is the real thing. Came off, came off of eBay. Um, yeah, here's a, another flight illusion gauge there. Um, yeah, the uh, air temperature, the temperature gauge up here will be a real gauge. Um, I've got the real gauge right here. It's got a crack in it, but it'll still look cool. That's going to go up in the up in the uh, top up there. Uh, the electrical panel is not complete yet. Uh, I've got, as you can see over here, I've got a whole bunch of FDS parts to get put in there. Um, what else? Oh, the uh, all the guards on here are, are actual switch guards. Um, I prefer that older look on everything. So you can see the older caps here. You know, I just I just prefer it. So I got those from uh, APHS. You can see how the disconnects are nice and worn, and you know they've got the wire ties. If I want to put those on. Uh, another thing I did was to take the carling switches. Let me uh, let me show you what those look like over here. Um, you take the the carling switch. This is what FDS sells. Um, but then if you cheat and you grind grind the top part down a little bit, and then get yourself some of these. Uh, aluminum toggles from gravity along with the caps which I've cut down you can see here's a cap that I cut down you can make yourself one of these so to take a look you could see here for instance on the electrical panel what I did was you know I drilled out the engravity. I think Ivar did this too. I drilled this out, ground down the actual switch a little bit, and then I fit these on with JB Weld. So now, you know, they, they're nicer looking, you know, bigger, fatter switches on most of the stuff. And, uh, you know, the, all the switches rep are representative now of what they should look like. Not all of them are fat, some of them are smaller. You can see a little bit more from an angle here. Okay, so moving to the back, um, you can see here, this is the back side of the panel. I still have things to do, like I'm gonna pull out these big, um, I don't know what you call them, rheostats or something. I'm going to pull those out and put pots in there so I can run uh, some of the lighting properly. Uh, I'm still missing some of the uh, LED backs. Those are all the blue with the dual brightness. I still got to finish making those. Um, I got a little treat at the bottom I'll show you in a minute, but I'm going to show you from the front first. This has been something I've been working on all weekend because I'm a stickler for detail. And I guess I'll go ahead and show you this now. <coughs> Down here, 
You have the engine start panel, which as you know, start switches are very expensive and almost impossible to get your hands on. Well, I was going to put in just regular switches. Uh, Jack had an idea about using the wiper switches with the spring-loaded momentary uh, to the left and then on, on, on positions. But the problem with those is that they're, I, I bought a couple, but they're indexed at 45 degrees, so they don't really match up to the, uh, you know, they don't match the uh, labeling here down at the start panel. So I wanted to make sure that when I turn these, that they're going to the right positions and not like all the way over here, 45 degrees, which is what the other ones would do. Also, the springs on the other ones are really tough. So I decided to put the regular switches in for now. Uh, I did check out like some of the other manufacturers who's making them, but I just thought they were too expensive for my blood right now. <clears throat> Maybe uh, FDS will come up with some down the road that are a little bit more affordable. Uh, if they do, maybe I'll buy those if they're, uh, uh, you know, if they got the proper um, uh, actuators in them. Uh, I guess you call them holding coils or something. Anyway, I decided to do something different, and I based it on someone else's design up online, uh, which I guess I'll have to find and give credit to in this post. Um, but it did take me all weekend to make. Uh, requires a little handy uh, skills. But I'll go ahead and give you a little demonstration here of how this works. So you go to ground and your engines are starting. Boom, 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 boom. And then at the appropriate time. Uh, well, wait a second. Hey, <laughs> glitch. Forgot to turn the power on. Hold on a second, guys. Okay. Let's try that again. Power's on now. So. Here we go. Put it to ground, and at the appropriate time, there we go. Put this one to ground. Now you may hear some noises going in the background. If you want to see something really cool, watch this. Get them both on at the same time. Boom. Pretty cool, eh? Make it still work. Still put them where they need to be. Yeah, one more time. Okay, so how did I do that? Well, I, did, I used someone else's idea using a servo. Uh, over here to my left, you can see I've got a RC radio right here right now. So all I'm doing right now is mimicking what I'll do later with fidgets, but I'm just moving the switch with the servo. Um, so let's go see how this looks from the back. Come around the back here, and here's the meat of it. Now, everyone's going to be different because I'm use, using a real overhead frame here, so you got different space and everything, but here's the, here's the mechanism right here. So what I did was I made a, a holder out of some sheet metal to hold those uh, regular switches. Get up in here. Uh, and then there's some little arms in here that are driving on the shafts. And a servo over here to operate the switches. And when a switch gets put into the right position, so I'm going to put... I'm going to put that switch as if it's in the start position. All I'm doing here is pushing with a control rod linkage and some uh, wheel collars against those um, arms. So it's basically just moving it back. Same with this one over here. If it gets put into the, into the start position, when, I'm, when I uh, have fidgets controlling the servo, it'll just put it back. Now, <clears throat> the way this rod is kind of moving in here, it, it doesn't bind up for any of the switch positions because it's loose enough on there that these switches can all move to their full extent and still operate independently. 
um, off of one servo. Very similar design to what uh, another gentleman up there.